our consent to do that, which we had mentioned. So the um, sessions are now being recorded. We had already also sent the Zoom background that we encourage participants to have as a virtual background, if possible, so that the pictures and the videos that would have would have um, you know, a nice flow and background to it. So if we are able to change, we'll encourage you to do that. Also, please ensure that your name is written in full and your affiliation under your participant profile so that we can identify those who are here with us. We're taking attendance, but particularly so that we can also identify people if they want to make comments and questions. This is a workshop, it's not a webinar, so it's going to be highly interactive. And that's why we have you know, high profile participants who registered and are sure to be part of this. I have just about two minutes to go and I just want to use um, that time to, I can't mention all the participants we have, but just to say that we've had almost 80 participants who have been interested in this project along the line. And interested meaning that they have responded to our surveys, they have taken part in our target interviews and focus group discussions. We have some who were unable to take back, but who were highly interested in joining. But because this is a capacity building workshop, and we want to ensure that we have a court of at least the first course of people who are thoroughly you know, um, built in terms of their capacity, we had a limit to the number of people we could engage. And that's why at the inception meeting, we only had 40 participants that we could invite. And this cut across universities and research institutions in Southwestern Nigeria. We have here with us the University of Lagos, researchers in the environmental management area. We have from University of Ibadan, from um, Federal University of Abelkuta, uh, the University of Agriculture of Abelkuta. We also have participants from Covenant University, from the National Institute for Oceanography and Marine Research. We also had one participant from NIMASA um, in the inception meeting, but he's unable to join us because he didn't register. And then across the policy-making institution, we also have NGOs as part of the researchers. Um, we have about three or four NGOs who are represented here and who are very interested in uh, working with policymakers and other researchers in order to bring about evidence used in environmental policy making in Nigeria. Of course, our policy um, makers who are here are people who cut across the partner institutions that I've mentioned before, as well as their MDEs. I'd like to particularly acknowledge the particular participants who, because we were unable to sponsor our trip to Lagos all the way from Abuja at the session meeting, she sponsored herself to come, Dr. Wakawa, and she also paid for accommodation to be at that meeting. This just shows the interest of the um, array of participants that we have in this project and to, you know, work with researchers and policymakers alike. On Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much for accepting to come to this uh, workshop. From the introduction, I've seen that a large array of people have come. People, the policymakers and the researchers are alike. So we thank you very much for participating in this uh, workshop. This, um, this workshop is very, very important because it's bringing, uh, bringing the policymakers and research together so that people don't carry out their research that is not useful to the research, to the policymakers. And the policymakers don't carry, uh, don't give uh, policies that will not. It is going to come in three ways. They are going to use evidence to take policy, to make sure they good policies. They are going to give opportunities for researchers to make good to carry out good research, and when we carry out the policymakers along, it means our output, research output, will be useful to the to the to the policymakers, and that will make sure that Nigeria and every area where environmental uh, interest issues are, are being carried out will be well used and uh, will be fit for purpose. So we thank you very much. University of Lagos, being a lot of first choice and the nation's pride, is hosting this. And we thank uh, the organizer, Dr. Shubamu, for leading this uh, research. And along with his uh, 
with our collaborators, the advisors. I'm looking forward to this, uh, this policy workshop in which everybody will have a new direction in, in research and a new direction in the policies. Policies that are obsolete will be taken out and, the, and researchers will know which area we need to carry out their research. It is a good thing that people are interested despite this COVID. The COVID has taught us so many things that so many things are possible without having to spend a lot of money traveling all around. Ordinarily, this won't have happened even because of COVID, but because we must carry out our work and therefore, um, and the technology has made it possible. I'm sure if we are still on 1G, it will not be possible. It is the technology that has improved and uh, means making this one possible for us to be able to, to gather. And this has also showed us that people don't have to say that I'm in England, I don't have to come. So we can now use the best brain. And I'm sure that's why we're able to get this array of uh, very top people in the environment, both as policymakers and researchers that are able to participate. If it is ordinary, ordinary days, maybe some people will be unable to come because of traveling, means their flights, their, and so many other things. So with this good opportunity we have, we hope that we are going to have a very good uh, mind robbing uh, workshop that is going to put the, uh, our environment in higher degree in, an, in a higher pedestal. I wish you a very good workshop that will give us a good output. And uh, I hope you have a good time together. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Dear colleagues, good morning, dear colleagues, and welcome to the second in-depth workshop of the UPIN project. Um, we congratulate the uh, project leader for this um, project. Um, the project actually started in January 2020, and there was a similar workshop like this, um, which was used to sensitize colleagues, policymakers, researchers on the, what the project was about and what they will be going on to do. That was um, face to face. We held it at the Othon Banefo Digital Research Center. Fortunately, unfortunately, we are now with COVID and it has to be virtual. But from our end in University of Lagos and from the Research and Innovation Office, we are hoping that at the end of this one week intense workshop, that both the researchers and policymakers in the field of environmental management would have acquired enough knowledge that would assist in the preparing policy briefs that will be impactful as they will be based on evidence from research. We encourage all participants to be committed to attending all the sessions and to actively participate. We are hoping it will be highly interactive and we are hoping that by the end of this one week, it will be um, a wonderful session that everyone would have been able to participate in. Um, I may not be able to stay with you for most part of today um, because as I am here now, I'm also supposed to be in an inaugural meeting of another board. I wish you the best and fruitful deliberations. But from time to time, I will join you and see how you are progressing. I congratulate the organizers once again, and I wish them a successful workshop. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, Good morning. This is a welcome address. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our professors, uh, uh, the teachers, you know, without you, we can't be, we want to applaud to grandmother, we can speak. 
I'm really happy to be here with you and um, the capacity building workshop can only be um, relevant now, especially as uh, Professor Pamiloni talked about. I love the topic. And uh, my colleague, there's a gap between the gown and the town. So this one, this topic of uh, making sure that policymakers and researchers are using evidence-based um, information to do environmental policy making in Nigeria is a great thing. I welcome you all to this workshop and uh, it gives us the opportunity to bridge this gap that I'm talking about. We all took this, I welcome you to this program very seriously and synergize it with the, the remarkable con contribution that comes from research. And um, like my sister would know, we were on a trip together trying to pick plastics off the water front. And we're talking to ourselves that um, if only we have enough research had been done in the university. And I said, wow, we don't know it. We need to reduce that dichotomy between the gown and the town. A glance through the list of presentations planned for these few days reveals the amazing diversity of the speakers from academicians to governance. The successful collaboration between the town and the gown will go a long way to provide the needed policy direction on various issues affecting the country. There is a great demand for the collaboration of the academic institution and policy makers, of which I am one. Developing countries are not simply passive recipients of technology. You know, we should create it, we should share it, and we should use it with our developing partners. On the contrary, many developing on the contrary, many developing countries are turning out various innovations. We use this expertise to innovate for ac academic purposes. However, the time has come for us now to form a bond with policymakers to make sure that the academic research and the innovations are used for policy formulation to improve the lives of the general populace. Ladies and gentlemen, most scientists, engineers, administrators play a key role in nation building in their various fields. But as it is expected of some of us today, we must come together and effect a mechanism, put a, an effective mechanism in place to transform this research to good policy that is implementable. Ladies and gentlemen, I pray that this capacity workshop will provide valuable opportunity for research for the scientists and the decision makers to share experiences. And I'm sure you all have fruitful and rewarding exchanges and deliberation. I look forward to learning from the outcome. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you very much and God bless you. of the federal controller, I want to stand on the existing protocol. This is her opening remarks by the federal controller of environment, federal minister of environment, Mrs. Olu Agbenla. She, I want to apologize on her behalf. She is having connection problem to join. So I read her opening remarks. It is my great pleasure to give this opening remark during this virtual workshop organized by UPIN to build the capacity of evidence producers, that's researchers in bracket, and evidence users, that's policy makers, for evidence-informed decision-making and their implementation. I want to specially <coughs> thank the organizers for being resolute to carry on with the project despite the COVID-19 pandemic using social media to continue with the execution phase. I want to welcome the project funders, advisors, partners, as well as the participants to this workshop. The main objective of the workshop as stated in the inception workshop in February is to expand leadership of scholars and scientists in promoting and supporting the use of research and other evidence by African government in policy formation and implementation. 
the adoption of evidence-based practice, that is scientific evidence by policymakers, professionals, and other decision makers is to eliminate unsound or outdated practices in favor of more effective ones. This is achievable by shifting the basis of decision making from traditions and unsystematic experience to family grounded scientific research. Evidence-based practice has been in use over the years in medicine, mental health, education, and other fields. It is, it is therefore imperative for policy slash decision maker in the environmental sector to embrace this practice in policy making. This approach will help the government to increase the impact of policies and programs to maximize the use of limited resources and also to prioritize key development issues which are often times overloaded. I want to implore every participant to fully participate and ensure that they benefit from this workshop. I wish you all a fruitful deliberation and a wonderful workshop. Thank you for listening. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Um, I want to, on behalf of the Federal Minister of Science and Technology, as a, one of the project partners, uh, welcome every one of you to this exciting and very, very important workshop. Um, I also want to, uh, on behalf of the ministry, uh, remind you that uh, uh, this workshop is coming at a very good time. Um, uh, it's very important um, and also it's going to be one of its kind in Africa. Because for a very long time, Policies exist in Africa. Policy making has been on as old as 1900. But what is lacking is the implementation, effective implementation of these policies. Therefore, this is a program that will ensure that public policies are properly communicated to the citizenry. And of course, public policies must be designed to deliver on goods and services to the public. Uh, in, in this wise, I also want to um, uh, say that the ministry has been on this track for a long time, uh, since 2015, since the advent of the Mohammed Buhari administration. The ministry came up with um, a program called National Ways to Wealth Program using appropriate technologies. This program was actually designed and is aimed at making sure that the solid waste policy of the of the Nigeria is implemented to the letter. Is of course there to benefit the downtrodden. This program was designed as early as the initial stages of the preparation for policy formulation started. We were one of the stakeholders that actually prepared the National Solid Waste Management Policy. I am so uh, very glad to inform you that a few days ago, the Federal Executive Council approved the National Solid Waste Management Policy for Nigeria. And this program is quite apt because it's going to be a program that will provide evidence, that will provide data, that the policy is being really implemented. There is, however, not only in the environmental sector, but all, all other sectors, there is need that all policies formulated to help citizens to deliver This program is coming at a very good time. This project is timely. I must, um, 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 I must congratulate the 
uh, all the partners. I must congratulate the chief host. I must congratulate Dr. Otemi. So I'm this and I wish, well, at the end of the day, it will be fruitful, not just to Nigeria, but to Africa. Uh, very fruitful deliberation and successful uh, work. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me. Yes. Okay, very good. All protocols duly observed. I would like to welcome you all to this uh, capacity building workshop for policymakers and researchers on the evidence used in environmental policy making in Nigeria. The use of um, scientific evidence in formulation of environmental policy is no doubt a best practice that must be adopted across the globe. The failure to do this simply implies that policy formulation will be done haphazardly, almost like a trial and error approach, and will largely be uh, a knee-jerk reaction, which are subject to failures and policy somersaults. There is also no doubt that uh, without request and intervention from policy makers, the researchers will also be grouping in the dark and carrying out experimental works or researches which may not be remotely relevant to national development. Therefore, this interconnectivity between diverse environmental stakeholders that the European project brings to our table is quite instructive, necessary, and profoundly important, especially during these trying times of COVID-19. Capacity building in evidence use for environmental policy making is indeed the way forward, whereby the economic situation and the level of environmental degra uh, degradation requires tailor-made, purposeful, and well-conceived policies to move our nation forward. It is therefore a great pleasure for me to be associated with our indefatigable project lead, Dr. Shubamu, and the European project as an advisor. I want to thank you all so much for listening. I look forward to participating actively intermittently, and I wish all of us a very happy deliberation during this workshop. Thank you so much. I've had really very good reviews about uh, this ongoing uh, workshop, and I'm sure people that are here uh, benefited immensely from listening. And the tail end of what I heard, I think uh, was I mean, very useful to me uh, as well. I thank all the um, resource persons. I appreciate uh, Dr. Temito Kwesho Bamu, who is uh, driving this passionately. I really wish I can, can share some of her passion with me. Uh, like I always joke around that age does indeed catch up with you and then you have to slow down uh, a little bit. So she is the one that is the force behind this and we want to appreciate her. Uh, we want to give her a, a virtual round of applause for leading this and for making this happen. Having said that, I, I think uh, one of the things that we need to do as academics, uh, one of the things that's gotten uh, very clear to me since I occupied this role, is that for us to um, be able to actually move Nigeria forward, the, all the tiers have to come together, the stakeholders, uh, researchers, um, the policy makers, uh, those in the ministry, everybody has to take this seriously because uh, we have a lot of solution to most of the problems that is uh, dogging us as a people. And uh, we, most of the time, we all have different focus. And it has to start from the academic, uh, I think, maybe because that's where I am, uh, because most of our focus is more of, okay, I publish, then I get promotion, and that's it. And for us to actually push it beyond, beyond this, uh, beyond uh, promotion, most researchers don't see any reason to do so. So this kind of thing is very, 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 very important for us as people in the academic 
And I'm very sure too, for people in the ministry, most of the time, uh, I joke around that uh, we are English speaking. For example, what I'm engaged in right now is something like this, is a form of town gang relationship. Okay, it's about COVID-19, it's around COVID-19. It's around containment of COVID-19. So on my committee, we have people from the academia, we have government officials, and we have people from the industry. And it's been very, very interesting. I've learned a lot. I've grown a lot. Um, whether positively, negatively, that will be matters arising later on. Uh, but I've grown, really, because every uh, organization has their culture. And until you learn that culture, it will be difficult for you. you, can, you we, we judge from our own uh, point of view. But, I mean, within the academy, we have our limitations. Uh, within the government, they also have limitations. The policymakers and even the uh, government officials, they have their limitations as well. So for us to be able to align for sustainable development, we need to know a little bit about each other. And that's why this is so important, because we have to change our mindsets. And I hope as we come to this, we are all open-minded. I like the fact that in this uh, UPIN, we have people from the different tiers. So it's an opportunity, like I said, at the opening uh, inception is that don't just see this as a workshop. See this as growing, finding your network. Uh, there's a common saying now that is circulating that your network is your net worth. And for you to do this, you still need people on this team. You need people from this team. So it's an opportunity because uh, talk about doing this and bringing all of us together is a platform, an opportunity for us to expand our network. Uh, personally, I, I keep assessing and reassessing. I just contacted some of the people that I'm uh, working with to let them know that I want to establish, expand my network and footprint into the industry. I, I serve on boards, but I want to serve on, I, I know my limitation, I know how far I've come, and I want to expand. Because as, as you expand, you, you are growing personally. Also, you have an opportunity to enrich which, wherever you go because you also have something to give. So having said that, I don't want to take uh, all your time. I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, Tokwe. Um, I want to thank all the people that have been supporting. I want to thank you too for being present uh, because one of the first things is to show up. Uh, most of the time, people sign up for programs and everything. And then after a while, they just want it on their CV. And I always tell people that once you have a certificate, there will be a time for you to defend that certificate if you don't know. If they say you are a fellow of something, there will be a day they'll put you on the spot and say, okay, yeah, yeah, fellow, come and say something. And so it's what you have within you that will come out. So if you just have a certificate and you didn't attend this program, then you've just changed yourself. And then the day that when the day comes and somebody asks you to uh, defend what you, what you claim to have, then that's when you realize that you know, is what you have. If you don't have something, you can't give it. So I thank you for being present. I looked at the number of participants. I see 44 um, uh, when I came in. And um, I, now 46, I think I've met somebody else came in. I think um, um, I just want to thank you for doing this. And I hope that this will be a, a part of something bigger, that, that they, this will spin off to things that in the next 10, 15 years we'll hear and then we'll be able to link to this. Once again, I want to thank uh, Tokwe for the honor. Uh, of uh, appointing me as adv advisor and uh, for bearing with my limitations. Thank you very much.